28 days at sea in the North Atlantic, pursuing clues provided by two great white sharks, tagged and tracked as they were drawn to eddies, huge rotating bodies of water containing distinct ecosystems. Raising the question, were the sharks diving deep into the eddies in search of food? With this expedition, we were able to sort of follow the lead of the sharks and look at these eddies and look and see some evidence that makes sense with their behavior, right? APLUW oceanographer Peter Gabe returned from the May cruise with samples of life from the ocean depths. Mctophids are also known as lanternfish. They're very common <laughs> mesopelagic fish. Organisms including some that were discovered thriving in unexpected places amid the North Atlantic bloom. We have this ocean that's blooming in the spring, and then inside of it we have all these little ecosystems moving around. And we're trying to get some sort of handle on what the different mechanisms are and why that's happening. As the lone physical oceanographer on board Atlantis, Gabe scrambled to make the best use of his time at sea. While we're heading towards the first station, which is a seven-day transit, we make a plan. Hey guys, here we go. A plan based on an array of sensors, some of them homegrown. If we built a CTD, which is uh, an instrument that measures the temperature, salinity, and depth, and from that we can get the layers of the ocean stratification. We could make measurements, and not just from the surface, but we could actually do it down to about 100 meters depth. And from that, we were able to observe sort of how these different fronts and eddies um, sort of affected the amount of phytoplankton in the water. We have uh, this acoustic system that's always deployed while we're there, and with the acoustics, we're looking at what is down deep in the twilight zone, so anywhere from 200 to 1,000 meters. We had a, a net built, it's called a midwater trawl, and we tow this net at different depths, so we attach a little uh, a beacon to it so we know how deep it is. We tow it at about four knots for 20 minutes. We bring it back to the ship as fast as we can, and then we sort what we find. So what kind of animals are down there? Gabe discovered that observations from above don't tell the whole story of life forms beneath the surface in ocean eddies. We did find one nice, strong anticyclone. We immediately saw that there was a lot of backscatterings. So there's a lot of stuff down there. We saw this very interesting inverse relationship. These anticyclones that are fairly warm, you can think of them sort of like a desert, right? They uh, have warm water, low nutrients, and sort of low plant biomass, low phytoplankton biomass. Below the surface, they're actually incredibly rich, uh, not only in, in backscattering, but in diversity. We saw a lot of different species there, whereas when we were looking at the cyclones, that were more sort of like a, a rainforest, right? It's a much higher plant or phytoplankton biomass. Below the surface, we saw some very pronounced layers, but the amount of backscattering was quite a bit lower. And from our net trawls, we saw that they weren't quite as diverse in terms of the species. We sort of expected to see higher mesopelagic biomass, so more fish and squid at depth, in regions where we had higher chlorophyll or higher primary production. And we actually saw the opposite, which was really quite fascinating. It was very interesting to see this disconnect from what we see from the surface to what's happening at depth. And I think that was one of the very surprising results from this, uh, this, this expedition. And it's one of those aha moments that you sometimes get in science. It's just completely took us by surprise. No surprise, presumably, to the sharks on the hunt for food. And we were able to sort of follow the lead of the sharks. We were able to see some evidence that looks like we're on the right track. Peter Gabe and his NAMES project colleagues returned to the North Atlantic in September.